Hello, in this tutorial I'm going to go over how to create a combat system inside Unreal Engine 5. So my character is currently holding a sword, and if I attack this dummy character with my sword enough times, it's going to take damage, and eventually it's going to die. So to get started, we're going to import the animations that we're going to use to help us build our combat system. So we're going to go to the mannequin folder, and go to the animations folder, and we want to briefly close Unreal Engine. And in the link of this video, I'm going to leave a link where you can download all these animations. So you just want to select all these animations and drag them into Unreal Engine. And for the skeleton, you want to select the U4 mannequin skeleton and click Import All. And this will import all the animations that we're going to need to use to build our combat system. Then we want to select all of these animations and right click on them and go Create and Create an Animation Montage. We need to make these animations animation montages because this is how we're going to reference them later. And if I just head inside one of these animation montages, next to it, it will say default group because this montage is currently a part of the default group slot. And in order to reference and play this animation, inside of our third person animation blueprint, we need to head inside there. And we just want to click on default and go to the animation graph. And then we just want to drag up here and look for default slot and hook this into here and as you can see the slot name is default group default slot and inside of our montage that is the same default group plus default slot so we just need to add this to our animation blueprint in order to reference and play these animation montages later now that we've imported the animations that we're going to use in our combat system the next thing we're going to do is import the weapons that we're going to use inside of our combat system so i'm going to create a new folder and i'll call this sword and again we can head inside here and briefly close Unreal Engine. And again, I'll leave a link in the description of where you can download this sword and this sword texture. For the sword, the way you want to import it is just drag it in, and then we want to import this as a skeletal mesh. So you can use a different um, model if you want to, but just make sure that you import it as a skeletal mesh and click Import. And then we can just import the texture that I'm going to use for my sword. I'm just gonna apply this texture to my sword. So to do that, I can just right click on the sword texture, create a material out of it. Then I can head to my sword mesh. And then I can just select the sword material that I just made and it will apply the sword texture. Then we can close this. And then you wanna to go to your weapon skeleton. So mine's called sword skeleton. Double click and open it up. And then you want to select the skeleton. So this skeleton is called Q underscore zero three. You just want to go add, and you want to select add socket. And you just want to double click this first socket and call it start. If your socket's looking really big like mine, we just want to change the relative scale here. So I'm going to change the relative scale to be zero point zero five in all of those axes. And then we just want to select here, select and translate objects and move this to the start of our sword or your weapon that you're using. Then we want to select the skeleton again and go add, add socket, just double click here and call this end. We'll make the relative scale of this 0.05 and all its axis as well because it's really big. And then we just want to move this to the bottom. And then we can click save. Next we can close this. Next, we want to make it so that when the player character is holding the sword, that they're holding it correctly and it's in the correct position. So to do that, we can head over to the mannequin folder, and go to the character, go to the mesh, and go to the U4 mannequin skeleton. We want to go to preview animation, and you just want to preview the sword slash animation, because this is the animation the character is going to do when they're holding a the sword. And we can just pause this, and I'm going to go to the first frame. And I'm just going to select here, his hand R, Right click and go add socket. I'm gonna double click on the socket and call this my sword socket. So this is gonna be the socket where my player character holds their sword or the weapon that they're gonna use. We can right click on here and go add preview asset. And you just want to select the sword that we just imported and just move it so the sword is in the player character's hand. So we can see mine's a bit off. So I'm gonna move it so it's exactly in the player character's hand. And you can rotate it a bit because mine's a bit in the guy's head. And if you're not happy with the scale of it, you could scale it down here. So I think I'll make mine 0.7 in all its axis. Okay, and I'm happy with that. So we can just go save. 
And now that we've set that all up, we're ready to start coding our combat system. So to get started, we're going to go to the third person BP, go to the blueprints and the third person character. We want to head to the event graph and we're just going to right click and look for right mouse button. We're going to create a simple combat system, so I'm not going to create something too complicated. It'll be like the one shown in the video. So when we press the right mouse button, we just want to drag off the pressed and look for do once. And then after the completed, we want to look for play animation montage. And we want to play the slash animation montage that we made at the start. So this sword slash. Then we can drag up here and look for delay. And hook this return value into here. So this will get how long this animation is. Then we can hook up this delay into the reset. And then we can just double click here to make it a bit tidier. Then we just want to go to the viewport, select our mesh and go add and then look for skeletal mesh. And then we want to make sure that the skeletal mesh is a child of the mesh. If it's not, just select the skeletal mesh and drag it into the mesh. So I'm just going to do that because it just undid what I did. And then for the skeletal mesh, um, for the parent socket, we just want to make this the sword. And then for the skeletal mesh, we want to select our sword. And if your sword's not in the correct location, just click on these arrows here and it'll make it so the sword's in the correct location. So now we can just go compile and test this out. Just test that everything works so far. So if I click the right mouse button, my character does that sword slash attack. Next, we're going to make it so that when the player character does their sword slash, we're going to use a line trace system to see if the player character hits anything with their sword. So to set that up, we can head to our third person character and go to the event graph. We want to find some free space and right click and look for add custom event and we're going to call this trigger sword and what we're going to do when we call the trigger sword event is basically do a line trace in between our sword to see if we hit anything so off of the trigger sword we just want to drag and look for set timer by event and we just want to right click on the return value here and promote it to a variable and call this trigger sword event for the time of this event, we want it to be 0.01 seconds. And we want to check this looping box. This will just mean that we'll do the event every 0.01 seconds. And for the event that we're going to do, we just want to drag off here and look for add custom event. And we're going to call this sword line trace. So every 0.01 seconds, we're going to be doing a line trace from our sword to see if we hear anything. So we just want to drag off here and look for line trace by channel. Where this is going to start, we want to drag in our skeletal mesh. I'm actually just going to select the skeletal mesh and rename this sword so it's a bit clearer. And we just want to drag off the sword and look for get socket location. I'm just going to do this. And if you remember, inside of our sword, so I'm just going to head back to my sword, skeleton, we made two sockets, start and end. So we're going to be referencing and making it do our line trace between the starting and ending points of our sword. So here, the first um, socket location we want to get is going to be called start or whatever you called um, your starting socket location. And we just want to hook this up into the start. And then we can just duplicate this. So I'll press control C and control V. And where our line trace will end, here in the socket name, we want to have it be called end because that's what we called our ending socket. And we want to hook this up to end. And for the traceability, just change this to be camera and for the draw debug, just change this to be for duration. Then we just want to drag off the R hit result. So this is basically we get the data of anything that we hit with this line trace. And we just want to go break hit result, click this arrow, and then off the hit actor, we can just drag off here and look for apply damage, and then hook this into here. And we'll make it so it does one damage anytime we hit something. Just so that we can see that this system's working and everything, just right click and go event, begin play, and just hook this into here. So we'll just test to see that it's doing a line trace for our sword. So just go compile and go play. And you should see that um, line trace going between your sword. So just make sure that that's happening. Next, we want to head back to our third person character and we can delete this event, begin play. 
So we're going to call this trigger sword event when the player character swings their sword. But we also want an event to cancel the slide trace when the player is not swinging their sword. So to set that up, we can just right click and look for add custom event and call it stop trigger sword. And what we can do to end this event is we can drag in our trigger sword event, get it, and then drag off here and look for clear invalidate timer by handler. And this will just cancel the event here. So now we're going to set it up so that when the player character does their swinging sword animation, it will trigger this event. And when they stop doing that animation, it will stop triggering the sword event. So to set that up, we just want to go compile here, close this, and in our blueprint folder, we just want to right click, look for blueprint class, and select notify. We want to look for anim notify state. So select this one and just go select and call this sword event. And we want to head inside here. Then we want to head over to functions, go to override and select receive notify begin. So we're going to make it trigger this notify. And when it begins, basically we want to trigger the um, trigger sword event. You'll see how this all fits in when we apply this to our animation. But for the time being, we want to just drag off the mesh component. And from here, we can get the owner. And from here, we can cast to the third person character or whatever your character is called. And then from here, we can trigger the sword event. So we just want to drag off here and look for trigger sword. And then hook this into here. Then we want to go to the functions again and go to receive notify end. So when this notify ends, we will drag off the mesh component, get the owner. From here, we can cast to the third person character, hook this into here. And then we can trigger the sword over event. So stop trigger sword and hook this into here and compile. So that we can reference and use this um, sword event, we need to head over to our mannequin and go to the animations. And then we want to go to our sword slash montage. And we want to go to the tab notifies. And we just want to right click and go add notify state. And then we want to add the sword event that we added. And then you just want to find a position in the animation where you want the line trace to start. So let's say I'll make my line trace start, let's say here. So I'm just going to drag this so it starts here where one and we can drag this all the way here. And where the two event is, that's where the sword line trace is going to end. So I'll end mine here. And we can go save. And we can just test this out. So if I just close this and go play, we can see that when I walk around, there are no line traces. However, if I do the attack animation, it does a line trace. So we've set it up so that when the player does that specific animation, it will do a line trace. Next, we just need to set up a dummy character who my player character can attack and kill. So to set that up, we can go to our blueprints and go to blueprint class and select character. Just call this guy dummy. Head inside here. For the mesh, we want it to be the SK mannequin. And we just want to move this down and rotate him minus 90 so he's facing the correct direction. For the animation blueprint, we just want him to use the UE4 mannequin, sorry, the third person animation blueprint. Then we want to head over to the length graph. And if you remember, in our third person character, we made it so that we apply damage to whatever we hit. So our dummy's gonna need some health. So under variables, just create a new variable, call this health, and change this variable type to be a float. And just compile this. And then we want to right click and look for event, any damage. So this will be triggered when the player character damages them here. And event, any damage, we just want to drag up here and look for do once. And then we want to get the amount of health that the dummy has. Let's make it so the dummy starts with say three health. And then we want to subtract, so look for subtract. And we want to subtract it by the amount of damage that they took. So I'll just hook from damage into here. And then we'll set it so that their health is um and then we'll set it so that they have a new health of whatever the health is minus the damage that they took. And then we're gonna to check to see if this value is less than or equal to zero. So we'll just drag up here and look for a branch and hook this into here. And if that is false, 
Then what we're going to do is look for play anim montage. And the anim montage that we're going to play is going to be the hit reaction montage. Then we just want to drag up here and look for delay. And hook this into here. And hook from completed into reset. And I'm just going to double click here just to move it down. So if our enemy is damaged and they still have more than zero health, then it's just going to play a hit reaction montage. However, if the player is damaged and they have no more health, then we're just going to drag up here and look for play and a montage. And we're going to play the death montage. And we just want to go compile. And one more thing, with our death montage, just so uh, it doesn't look weird, we want to go to browse, you can click this browse icon. It will take us to our animation, and we just want to go to the death montage animation. And then under asset details, under search details, we want to look for auto, enable auto blend out, and just leave this unchecked, and save that. And that will just make it so that when it plays the animation, it doesn't loop back to its original position. So you just want to make sure that's checked. And then we can drag in our dummy, go play, and hit my dummy, let's say three times with my sword. He'll react. If I hit him the third time, he's going to die. And he'll do his death animation. So with that, we've set up a melee attack system. I just prefer this system because it uses a line trace. And I think it's a lot more accurate than the old system that I previously made. So that's all for this tutorial. If you enjoyed, like and subscribe to help share the video. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Also, bonus tip. If you want it so the player character can't move when they're doing their attacking animation, you just want to head over to the animations folder and find your attacking animation, so mine's called Sword Slash. And under the details, you want to look for Root Motion and just enable Root Motion and go save. And that will just make it so the player character can't move when they're doing the attacking animation.